Hello, my name is Tiago Cortinhal, and I'm going to present my work entitled Semantic Layer uh, Domain Translation from LIDAR Point Clouds to Panoramic Color Images. This work was done by myself, Atit Kurnas, and my PhD supervisor, Aaron Axoy, at the University of Olmstad in Sweden. Uh, before I go into more details about our work, I want to give a quick overview of what we are going to talk about uh, today. So first, I want to start with the motivation, then the inputs that we are using on our um, network, a pipeline overview, show you some uh, results and talk a bit about our future work directions that we are currently exploring. So um, for the motivation is when you think about a autonomous vehicle, you think about um, a car that has different types of sensors. Those sensors try to capture in its own modality uh, the current scene around the vehicle. After having uh, that scene, we'll try to have some kind of semantic perception of the surroundings of the, of the vehicle. So if you have an, a camera, you want to perform some kind of semantic segmentation or panoptic segmentation or object detection to give a more abstract but more complete, more workable representation of that like the points. And so having uh, real-time semantic seg segmentation uh, or semantic networks, uh, to be more general, will allow us to perform um, uh, more good planning and gosh possible danger uh, situations around the car. Um, because we will have then several types of sensors uh, in the image, uh, in the diagram, you can see example with two sensors, camera and LiDAR, it's um, reasonable to think about performing some kind of sensor fusion because each sensor will have its own uh, strong and weak points. And normally when we try to, when you fuse them together, you'll have a stronger representation coming out um, from that, um, that network. Um, but this has some kind of drawback, uh, a very strong drawback that is when you are in a working car in a real scenario, you need all sensors to be available at all times. If you want to have the, the pipeline working that depends strongly on sensor fusion, uh, if uh, a sensor fails, like in, in the image, the camera fails, your system will be strongly hurt by that failure. So that is a, the, the, one of the strongest motivations that we had that it, would, it will help um, the task if you had some kind of sensor mapping uh, in the pipeline, um, a network that would allow, allow us still in the real time, uh, uh, with a real time in hand, but will allow us to recover the missing uh, modality. Um, so the system could continue working. Uh, another uh, motivation is instead of trying to uh, recover directly the RGB in the case in uh, the case of our work, um, we'll try to recover first the um, semantic uh, maps. This is because if you are training a network and you are trying to recover real images, those real images will be coming, especially in a game setting, be coming from the same distribution of the data uh, set that you have. So it will be a bit domain dependent. Uh, and we want to try to avoid that. And a way to avoid that is trying to recover a higher representation um, type of structure, the semantic segmentation maps. Uh, so yeah, those are the main motivators behind our current work. Um, just to give a bit um, a quick um, explanation of what is domain translation. Um, the domain translation is um, a task, the task to try to find a meaningful mapping between two different uh, domains. Um, so in our case, we have the domain of the LiDAR, that will be our source domain, and we have to find a mapping, a function that can bring what, that can transform one at the point to be, uh, to be realistic like it was coming from the another domain. So in this case, the RGB semantic segmentation, that would be our target domain. Um, this will also 
in the event setting allows us to export uh, information if you we can use its techniques for it to be not uh, supervised but in our case for now we are uh, following a supervised uh, approach and yeah so the inputs um, from the LiDAR um, it will be a 3D uh, point cloud that will transform a spherical um, projection on it. So have a spherical representation from the LiDAR. Um, and for the RGB, it will be the corresponding RGB images for each scan of um, the LiDAR that we have. Uh, we'll have the RGB on top and the semantic segmentation on bottom. Um, as some of you might notice, the semantic segmentation are not very perfect. That is because um, we are using a third uh, network to do the semantic segmentation as semantic it doesn't have uh, ground truth to allow us to have it. Because semantic it is more focalized on the, on the LiDAR. So yeah, the overview of our network. We'll start with, uh, as I said, the semantic uh, segmentation on the RGB. This will provide us with our ground truth uh, for the Titanet, that will be the segments, the Y. Uh, yeah. And um, then you have uh, another network called Subsenext that will take as um, input the spherical representation of LiDAR and give us uh, semantic segments for the, the LiDAR. Um, then it comes to play our own network, um, TitanNet, um, the work of the, the network of this paper, TitanNet, that will be a conditional GAN that is conditioned on the semantic segmentation maps. So um, we feed them the still working uh, sensor readings that will be the raw LiDAR um, spherical representations and the condition uh, the conditional that will be the semantic segments of LiDAR and try to generate, try to learn the, the, the mapping from one, from one domain to the other and have the fake segments that will be the white hats. Then, um, because now we have this uh, higher representation and it, we can have, we have the possibility to have another mapping to the real RGB scenario, uh, so we use V2VNet. Uh, V2VNet is another um, GAN-like architecture that will take our um, fake segments and try to generate uh, real images. Um, it's also worth noting that our the schematic is also conditional, and it works on a patch and kind of uh, uh, approach. So some results that you can see um, right now. Um, we compared our work with PixPix. Um, even it's only a preliminary uh, study, we only compared it yet in this setting. So pixel peaks, we already can see that the MIU is um, high. It has a very good uh, ability to recover uh, the, the missing information, uh, to, re to have the mapping from one domain to the other. And you can see that the main uh, um, classes like road, car, um, and etc. are recovered to a okay kind of uh, IOU. Um, on the image, you can see the first columns will be the, the ground truth. Uh, the middle columns will be our work, Titanet, and the last columns will be pixel -pix. Um, So we did some uh, version studies and we, um, to prove our hypothesis that uh, semantic segmentation maps are important and make the training faster and easier, we retrain everything without the conditional, without the conditional uh, of the segmentation maps and we try to recover directly the RGB. Uh, in this case, we have another network that we train from scratch, um, SCUNet, that had some uh, good results, but their kind of input is different. So that's why I didn't test uh, in this scenario. Um, and you can see that the results are not good. In some of the networks, you can kind of see very blurry what's happening, but it's not a very good, um, a very good um, result. So this it's a, a good indication that semantic segmentation maps is a good, a good middle step to accelerate and have better results when you try to recover modality of uh, a missing sensor. 
Um, we also create some videos because we said it will be also domain agnostic. So in this case, we generated the totality of 360. So because it's a fully connected, uh, a fully, sorry, a fully con convolutional neural network, we can feed any type of any size of image. So we fed the entirety of the 360 of the LiDAR and we are um, then using uh, other networks to to find the mapping to semantic ET and cityscapes to show that it's domain agnostic because the results follow the same um, distributions of those two data sets uh, without having the need to train to to have two different titanets so we can rely on external resources for that uh, so the ongoing work uh, uh, is trying to use transformers. We have seen some, I know I'm running out of time, but we have seen transformers that uh, operate on computer vision tasks with very good results. So that's something that we are trying to, to do. And the results that we have so far, even though they are quite uh, good, we can see some flickering in terms of the classes that we'd like to have instance-like uh, uh, representations, like cars, bicycles, people. Uh, so to try to overcome that, we are thinking about adding uh, temporal information and we are playing with uh, uh, instance segmentation, panoptic uh, segmentation to try to overcome that. Uh, anyway, thank you so much for listening. If you have any questions, you can drop in me an email or contact me in any of the social medias that you find. Okay, bye.